now that you have the collar assembly complete on the cleanout collar, it's time to go back to the rest of the assembled valve and take it apart even further. A major mistake that is made with this valve is now taking this and putting it on there. You, if you do that, you can't inspect your work along the way. So let's go ahead and take this apart. Just a matter of taking this clamp off. And as you're backing this off, you'll feel, feel the tension start to release. And eventually, you will be able to take this butterfly and bring it around and then take the valve the rest of the way apart. As you can see, this right here is what is going to actually attach to the cleanout collar on the lugs on the cleanout collar, which will allow you to take it off and contain all the products still inside of this cylinder right here. Now the reason why we take this completely apart is because once we put it on here, we want to test it to make sure that it's going to work properly. As you can see, it does go on there. But you can, what you can also see is the reason why I told you originally to give yourself about a sideways finger distance between the clean out cap and the assembly. Because if you didn't, this would actually go in or dig into the Viton gasket right here, which would cause a, a, a rather sizable leak. The next part of the assembly process is actually to put the housing up against the Viton gasket. Now when you do this and you move in here, it's important to keep good pressure on this valve to make sure that it won't come apart. After you apply pressure to it, get someone to assist you to hold, hold further pressure on, which is what I'll do right now. Got it. Take your clamp, and this is where it requires a little bit of trick work. You just got to make sure that you have it all the way around on both sides. You can do that by putting your fingers around here to make sure it's in, and then just rotating it to where you can see where it's going to come together and then just press this in and as needed loosen up this butterfly and then begin the tightening process. Once you've tightened this down and when you are doing this you want this to be as tight as you can physically tighten it with your hand. For demonstration purposes I'll get it to about right there but that's still fairly tight. The next part of the assembly process is to take this mechanism, look up inside there, line up the, the lugs of the cleanout collar with the openings that are made on the valve itself. Now understand, this is a plunger, it's not a screw. What you need to do is move it in there, look up inside there, keep your hands out of the way, capture the lugs, and then don't press on, this, on the valve itself. Press on this little plate right here and you'll hear it snap in place. At that point, an assistant can come in and help you assemble, finish the assembly of the valve. By tightening up this butterfly, you're going to be compressing a little gasket that's up inside there to make sure there's not going to be any leaks. Once we have the valve completely assembled, now it's time to determine exactly what it is we're going to do and when we're going to do it. When we want to, if we want to use this to offload through, then what we're going to need to do is go ahead and hook up all of our hoses, all of our pumps, and get everything ready to go. Because as soon as we take that cap off, product is going to start flowing. If your application hasn't been absolutely perfect, in fact, you could have a small leak back here, but because you have your unloading process already in line, even if there is a tiny minor leak, as soon as you start your pump process, that, that, le that leak is, or the product is going to be sucked right past the leak, so it should be very minimum at very first and then completely go away once the pumping process is started. Now, when we get ready to take this off, we're going to make sure we don't make a few big mistakes. One of the mistakes being this, that you stand directly in front of this valve and press up against it. Because once you try to open this, the cleanout cap itself literally wants to come towards you. When you're pressing in on it, it makes it feel like it's cross-threaded. And if you're too close to that Viton gasket inside, in fact, you may well cut into it. Instead, you want to stand to the side. And when you stand to the side, you keep yourself out of the way of any potentially large leaks, especially considering the fact that it's a pressure vessel. When you're ready to open it and you have all your unloading process in line, it's really a matter of just turning this thing to the left. And as you turn it, you will feel the cap loosening up and then finally the cap coming off and the product is going to push the cap out of your way. At that point, 
the, uh, the, the sort of ball valve down here can be opened up and then the pumping process can start. Now when you see some emergency responders with this emergency product removal device, they may not have this ball valve on here, it just may be a cam lock fitting, so as soon as they release the product, then the pumping process has to begin. Uh, this is not always necessary, it's great for training, uh, it also does give you another point of control. As you see right here, you see we've developed a small leak, and that is in fact coming from a packing nut right that you see me tightening right here. Now, again, it will be very tiny in nature. All you need to do is turn this with your hand until you get it tight enough to stop the leak. The packing in there, of course, is to prevent any product from coming leaking down on the stem itself. Just like in any un pump unloading process, you're going to need to vent the trailer, which means when we're taking product out here, we've got to let something in the tank. Unfortunately, most of the areas that we usually vent the trailer th through are now have liquid up against them. So we have to get a little bit more creative, which in fact we could use in another emergency product removal valve on another clean out car, or we may be able to go into the crash box where there's a three quarter inch air inlet, hook up a hose and extend it up above the liquid level. As the product starts to flow and we turn on our prop or turn on our pump, we will slowly crack the air inlet or the valve on the air inlet until we hear air drawing in there. We want to run our pump at a very moderate level just so it's just taking the product off very, very slowly. For more information on the emergency product removal device, to purchase one or to purchase a dome leak simulator, feel free to visit our website.